Marcus Aurelius was the emperor of Rome from 161 to 180 AD. During his rule, Aurelius found the time to construct a series of autobiographical writings now known as the Meditations. The Meditations is regarded as one of the greatest works of philosophy, which is why in this video we'll be using some of his wisdom as a motivation to talk about 10 things we should do to wake up early. Number 1. Find your Ikigai Marcus Aurelius says, Everything, a horse, a vine, is created for some duty. For what task then were you yourself created? Ikigai is a Japanese wellness theory that can make your mornings beautiful. It's defined as one's reason for which you wake up in the morning, which can be interpreted as your purpose in life. Marcus Aurelius believed that we each have a purpose, something that we were created for. It's our duty to carry out that purpose because it's purpose that gets you out of bed each morning. Your ikigai could be anything, your long lost hobby, a new skill you wish to develop, or anything that gives you a solid reason to be excited about it. The best way to find your ikigai is by asking yourself this one simple question. If I had more time, what are the things I could do? You may come up with multiple answers, so select the one that excites you the most. Is it a task you need to complete before you start off with your day because the whole world is quiet and you have ample time for yourself to pursue the activity you're excited about, which will eventually help you to have healthy social connections, to challenge yourself in a good way, to relieve stress, to be fit, to be creative, and to ward off depression? You need to give yourself a solid reason to wake up, something to do every morning that excites you the most. Number two. Prepare yourself for mornings. In the words of Marcus Aurelius, all our efforts must be directed towards an end or we will act in vain. If it is not the right end, we will fail utterly. Becoming a morning person requires more work than setting your alarm for 5 a.m. and hoping for the best. People who've decided to make the most of their mornings not only have a routine for when they wake up, but before they go to bed as well. While you may not have control over your consciousness while you're asleep, you definitely have control over your evening activities that will make you get up out of your bed the following morning. You can start by minimizing your television and phone time before bed. By keeping everything ready for the morning, for example if you wish to go to the gym then put out your gym outfit before you go to bed. By putting out your clothing the night before, you save energy the next day. If you exercise in the mornings, it'll be tough to skip out on a workout when your gym clothes and trainers are sitting at the foot of your bed when you wake up. This is a two-minute exercise that will save you energy in the morning. You can even use your evening time to settle any unresolved issues. Having unresolved issues will not only have your mind racing before you go to sleep, but you'll also wake up stressed out. It's better to spend whatever time is needed to resolve any issues you can before you go to bed. This will help your focus as you get into your morning routine. By making small sacrifices, you can be on your way to becoming a morning person and squeezing the most out of your day to be more productive. Number 3. Avoid distractions after you wake up Marcus Aurelius says, Concentrate every minute like a Roman, like a man, on doing what's in front of you and on freeing yourself from all other distractions. Some mornings you wake up and you feel like you're being pulled in lots of different directions. You usually get distracted by all sorts of things, miscellaneous emails, a new episode of your favourite TV show, your cell phone ringing, text messages, the dirty dishes in the sink, the unpaid gas and electric bills, the list goes on. No matter how early you wake up, you will be distracted. There may be days when you may be convinced that the world is conspiring to keep you from getting anything of substance done. Much of the time, the things that distract us are the things that need to get done, but they aren't necessarily what we should be focusing on right that second. If you're waking up early, you're waking up for a reason, which is to make the most of this extra time to do the things that you love before you get pulled in by the demands of your daily life. Number 4. Wake up consistently According to Marcus Aurelius, you must build up your life action by action and be content if each one achieves its goal as far as possible and no one can keep you from this. If you're serious about waking up early every day, then you have to do it consistently in order to make it part of your routine you need to develop your self-discipline. Self-discipline is nothing more but the habit of consistency, finding the motivation to do something again and again until you do it on autopilot and start seeing the results. Hal Elrod in his book The Miracle Morning tells us that we need to be consistent for the first 30 days to develop this new routine. We need to divide the 30-day time frame into three 10-day phases. 
Each of these phases presents a different set of emotional challenges and mental roadblocks to sticking with the new habit. The first 10 days of implementing any new habit or ridding yourself of any old habit can feel almost unbearable. If your new habit is waking up early, then the first 10 days of your experience might be something like this. Oh God, it's morning already. Oh, I don't want to get up. I am so tired. I need more sleep. Where's the coffee? And then we hit the snooze button. The problem for most people is that they don't realize that this seemingly unbearable first 10 days is only temporary. Once you get through the first 10 days, the most difficult 10 days, you begin the second 10 day phase, which is considerably easier. While days 11 to 20 are not unbearable, they're still uncomfortable and will require discipline and commitment on your part. But by this time, you'll be getting used to waking up early. You'll have also developed some confidence and positive associations to the benefits of your habit, so stay committed. Phase three is also where the actual transformation occurs. So you go from having an identity that says, I am not a morning person to I am a morning person. Instead of dreading your alarm clock in the morning, now when the alarm goes off, you're excited to wake up and get going because you've done it for over 20 days in a row. You're starting to see and feel the benefits. Number five, go easy on yourself. As we learn from the words of Marcus Aurelius, stick with the situation at hand and ask, why is this so unbearable? Why can't I endure it? You'll be embarrassed to answer. The truth is our brain prioritizes instant gratification. It values short-term rewards over long-term benefits, which is why 95% of people fail time and time again to start exercise routines in the first 10 days. The problem for most people is that they don't realize that this seemingly unbearable first 10 days is only temporary. Instead, they think that it's the way the new habit feels and will always feel, telling themselves, if the new habit is this painful, forget it, it's not worth it. Which is why when we fail to wake up early on one day, we often say to ourselves that I'll start waking up early from next Monday or from next month. We need to understand that our ability to keep going is what molds us into a disciplined and strong person. A bad day doesn't have to become a bad week. A bad week doesn't have to become a bad year. We need to realize that the new day comes with a new life and with another opportunity to be better. So forgive yourself for waking up late today and start waking up early from tomorrow. Number six, practice voluntary hardship. Marcus Aurelius says, we should discipline ourselves in small things and from there progress to things of greater value. If you have a headache, practice not cursing. Don't curse every time you have an earache. And I'm not saying that you can't complain, only don't complain with your whole being. Voluntary hardship means constantly testing ourselves, and by making life routinely uncomfortable in some way, we're hardening ourselves for the day we may need to live it for real. To wake up early, you can practice voluntary hardships like putting your alarm clock far from your bedside because if it's right next to your bed, you'll shut it off or hit snooze. Never hit snooze. If it's far from your bed, you'll have to get up and out of bed to shut it off. And by then, you're already up, so now all you have to do is just stay up. Get out of the bedroom as soon as you shut off the alarm. Don't allow yourself to rationalize going back to bed. If you allow your brain to talk you out of getting up early, you'll never do it. Don't make getting back into bed an option. Just force yourself to go out of the room. Jump in a cold shower. If you have a hard time getting going in the morning, jump in a cold shower. You'll see how quickly it wakes you up. The cold water increases the circulation in your body, which leads to a higher demand for oxygen. You automatically start breathing deeper, and this fights off fatigue. Number seven, find an accountability partner. To quote Marcus Aurelius, it'll even do to socialize with men of good character in order to model your life on theirs, whether you choose someone living or someone from the past. When you realize that your purpose is to wake up early, then having a good accountability partner is very important. As we go after our goals, there's one skill that will stand out high above all the others. The skill of holding yourself accountable. An accountability partner is a person who coaches another person to help them keep commitment. Your accountability partner could be your friends or your family or a colleague who's already achieved the goal you're working towards. In this case, your accountability partner will help you stay consistent with your morning commitments and your progress. For partnerships, you must select someone who is as committed as you are, has similar values, can be available when you're available and is genuinely interested in helping you succeed with your morning routine. 
An accountability relationship always feels good because knowing that we'll check in with someone who is emotionally and energetically invested in our success keeps us on track even when things get hard. Number 8. Remind yourself of death. Marcus Aurelius informs us, since it is possible that you might depart from life this very moment, regulate every act and thought accordingly. The Stoics made it routine to keep the prospect of death in mind, and you too can practice this every morning. There is a phrase within the Stoic philosophy called memento mori, which means remember that you will die. The one perennial truth, rich or not, successful or not, religious, philosophical, it doesn't matter, you will die. The point of this reminder isn't to be morbid or promote fear, but to inspire, motivate and clarify. This morning routine will help you to keep your perspective on things that really matter, which your internal principles, your house, your money, your fame is temporary and it can be taken away from you at any time. The one thing that can never be taken away from you is your character. It's only our character that defines us and carries us through life. A man can rise or fall just due to the virtues or faults of his character and it's often this that leaves a legacy. So the idea of reminding yourself of your death will ground you. Just like Steve Jobs, every morning look in the mirror and ask yourself, if today were the last day of my life, would I want to do what I'm about to do today? And if you get too many days without saying yes to this question, then you know you have to change something very fast. Number 9. Practice negative visualization every morning. We're advised by Marcus Aurelius, when you wake up in the morning, tell yourself, the people I deal with today will be meddling, ungrateful, arrogant, dishonest, jealous and surly. They are like this because they can't tell good from evil. Rather than imagining an ideal society, the Stoics see the world as it is. Negative visualization is all about keeping your expectations up front and being far more honest with yourself. What could go wrong? How could you handle such scenarios? Can you overcome or plan for them? When you prepare for the worst, you're in a better place to deal with disaster if and when it does arise. For example, you go into work and your boss is treating you badly. But since you've already visualized this scenario in the morning, you're always prepared for your boss to be difficult and uncooperative. As a result, you'll be super pleased when he unexpectedly treats you well, but even if he never does, you'll be prepared and always able to keep your cool. Visualizing negative occurrences makes you fear them less, leaves you less anxious when they happen and mentally prepares us to deal with the crises should they come along. You'll also find yourself feeling elated on the occasions where they don't occur. Number 10. Appreciate your life. In our final quote this video from Marcus Aurelius, he says, To the gods I am indebted for having good grandfathers, good parents, a good sister, good teachers, good associates, good kinsmen and friends, nearly everything good. Marcus Aurelius is very honest and humble about how he learned to develop his values and ethics and displays much gratitude to those who helped him to become himself. We too can replicate this by keeping a gratitude journal. Keeping a gratitude journal is a simple process. Gratitude doesn't have to be saved for the big things in life. The habit of being grateful starts with appreciating every good thing in life and recognizing that there's nothing too small for you to be thankful for. Every day you should pick three to five things that you're thankful for and write them down in a notebook or journal. So let's say you had a rough day at work, focus on coming home to your family or your pet or simply that you're just grateful for being alive. Appreciating your life just before going to bed will not only give you a peaceful night's sleep but will also give you good reason to wake up with confidence, ready for the new challenges of the day.